God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. Power of the anointed word. The power of the anointed word. Not just a word. Is the anointed word. The power of an empowered word. We're, we're, we're talking, now, now let, let, let's rephrase that again. We're talking about prophet. The power of the prophetic word. The power of a word that comes out of the mouth of a prophet. The power in a word birthed by God in the spirit of a prophet. That is verbalized through his vocal cords. There's something about it. And now let's look at some scriptures before we talk about Joshua. And the Bible says in, in, in Job chapter 22 verse 28. It said, for thou shalt decree a thing. And it shall be what? Established unto thee. Thou, you shall make a word, and it will stand. You will est it be established unto thee when you decree a thing. When you speak forth a thing, heaven responds. And look, look, heaven cannot respond to my word if I have over time demonstrated that I can respond to heaven's word heaven will not respond to my word if I have not demonstrated that I respond to heaven's word like I said that heaven that that spiritual realm is an orderly realm it's an orderly realm everybody's on this lane everybody's traveling this lane Whatsoever thou have been called abide. That's what the Bible said. You stay in your lane. I stay in my lane. And I bring a choreograph order. And here it says, I will speak a thing. And heaven picks it up. Because I'm speaking on behalf of heaven. It's a prophetic word. And you and me should begin to operate in the prophetic and what I mean is speaking on the behalf of God. Letting the word of God mix with faith in me until I begin to verbalize the word of God by faith. And put it into motion. And God said, when I speak like that, he said, it shall be established how unto me. It shall come to pass what I say. Now, Matthew 18 and verse 18. He said, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on the earth shall be bound in the heaven. Whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be lose in heaven. What a privilege! What a power. God says to the church, when you stand against anything, heaven stands against it. When you bind anything, it is bound. When you lose anything, it is loose. When you prohibit anything, it is prohibited. When you allow anything, it is allowed. So whatever you allow is what is allowed. Whatever I disallow is disallowed. So whatever is happening to me, I allow it. What I'm going through, I allow it. Where I'm at in my walk with God, I allow it. Because what I allow, heaven allowed he said whatsoever you shall buy bind on earth shall be bound in heaven 
In other words, you are my, my peace on earth. You are my conduit to operate it on earth. You are my medium to operate it on earth. So whatever you bind, I see to it that it comes to pass. Now, what are you binding? What are you losing? What are you allowing? What are you disallowing? Where is the devil? Oh, the devil. Look, no, it's not the devil. It is me. Because the Lord told me, resist the devil and he shall flee. So if I don't resist him, I give him a feed day over my life. I let him climb all over me. I let him come on my back. I let him jump on my head. But a day comes when a man comes to knowledge and say, devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And when I speak those words, the devil is bound. But as long as I keep my mouth shut, what's going to happen is the enemy has a field day over my life. So what I'm going through, where I'm at in my life, is because I have allowed it. I have not taken my place in the Lord. I have not done what heaven requires of me to do. To say to the devil and the circumstances that surround me. Enough is enough. Can't take it no more. And I command you in the name of Jesus. Seize in your track. And we see the power of God come down out of heaven. Until I invoke that power. It is there dormant. That I need to activate it. By the power of my words. In the name of Jesus. And now let's look at a story here. That is pertinent to what we're saying. Joshua. Joshua. Joshua chapter 6. And Joshua, the leader of his people, had just crossed over Jordan. And they all were baptized in the Jordan. And he said to them, pick up the stones and lay at the bottom of the Jordan in memorial to God. That your children someday might ask about it. And when they ask about it, the stones that are at the bottom of the Jordan, tell them what the Lord had done for us. That Jehovah had done so great things for us. And now as they moved over the Jordan. Here comes Jericho. Here comes Jericho. And Jericho. Jericho walled around. But God had told them that I have given you the land. Go possess it. And so the, the war. Could not intimidate the word that has been spoken to them. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Why? Because they, they, they are fixated on the word of God, not the war. Glory to God. Wait, wait. They, they were not looking at the war, they're looking at the word. <laughs> Glory to God. Wait, like I said, tomorrow, when, you, when, you, when your gaze is in the war, you know what is happening is that you are painting in your mind a war that's against you. But if, if the word is your gaze, you're painting in your mind what Jehovah said, go get it. I have given it to you. And so Joshua saw this. And God told Joshua that everything, everything that is in Jericho, you go and destroy it. But I wanted to keep for me the gold and the silver and the bronze. They're all going into the Lord's treasury. Can't pass through this and, and waste my time and get nothing out of it. <laughs> Glory to God. But he told him destroy every single thing. Jericho must be destroyed now. And here comes Joshua and his, his ragtag army. Never trained in how to fight. Now against a very trained army. It is not by power. It is not by might. But by my spirit, said the Lord. I, I may not know how to do it. But God's going to do it for me. I may not know how to say it. He said, open your mouth. I'll fill it up with words. May not know how to think about it. He said, I'll think for you. Just follow me. You know, when Jesus called disciples, he looked at them. Peter and James they were there. Uh, uh, John and James were there doing their thing. Peter was doing his thing too. They had this cooperation and having a big business. And Jesus walked by and looked at them. Sons of Zebedee, James and John. Leave your net and follow me. And I'll make you fishers of men. 
and the Bible says, at once they left everything and followed him. There's a power of the word that comes out of the master's mouth. You can't resist it when he, when he hits your eardrum. Can't resist the word of God when he hits you so hard. Can't resist it. And so they followed him, the Bible says. And the reason they followed him, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this, is because their destiny was tied to that man. Their destiny, you only follow folks to whom your destiny is tied. You can't follow everybody. Uh, you got to recognize them, that my destiny is tied with this one. I, I'm going to follow him. I'm going to follow him as long as I die because my destiny is tied with him. When he prosper, I prosper. When he go up, I go up. I got to follow. I'm tied to this at the waist. There's some folk that you're tied to. There's some folk you're not tied to because your destiny is not tied to them. They're just leading you to the next stop in your life and they let you go. They hand you over to another person who takes you to the next stop, hand you over to another person. But there's some folk that you're going on the same journey together and you got to stick together. You got to stay together because both of your falling and your rising depend on each other sticking together. And so there are folk that you are tied to their destiny. And for those 12 disciples, their destiny were tied to Jesus. That's why the lucrative business that they're wearing, Jesus shut it down. So your destiny is not in the fishing. Your destiny is in the fishing of man. Glory to God. But it, it takes somebody like James and John who recognize that my destiny is tied here to stay in there. It takes somebody. like I'll, I'll, I've said this example many times. Hey guy, you remember hey guy, right? And and and, and he, she was serving with Abraham. And listen to this, some of us who who are very very strong hearted, you're strong hearted, you want to do your own thing. It, it doesn't lead it, it, it doesn't lead me, lead you anywhere. It, it said it said sometimes there are many ways that are, that that seem right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. That's what the Bible says. And so Hagar, Hagar was with Sarah. In the, in, and Sarah had treated him harsh, uh, treated her harshly. And, and she said, I, I won't take it no more. We'll take it no more. You gotta, you gotta always be in the spirit. Be in the spirit. And see to it that you, you are tired. To your destiny if destiny is not involved you're just going taking a walk that's it you're not on a journey you're taking a walk you're on a journey with folk that you are with the destiny tie you're taking a walk with somebody who is leading you to the next stop there's some folk you're just taking a walk with them others you're taking your destiny is tied to them and hey guys destiny was tied to who to sarah and when she and when she got treated, said, oh, pastor said this to me. I won't come into church no more. Oh, oh, uh, pastor's wife said this to me. I won't come into church no more. You got to pray. God, is my destiny tied with the pastor? If God said, yeah, your destiny is tied with him, then you better stay in there. Oh, Lord, my boss said this to me. I quit. No, you can't. If your destiny is tied to there, you don't quit. We said it last week. Isaac was going to quit. Forget it. Can't take this job no more. I'm leaving. I'm going over there. And God said, I want to bless you. Son, I want to bless you. Just follow me. Follow God. Don't follow your mind. Follow God. Stay with God. And if God tells you move, move quick. Move quick. Because, you know, sometimes the relationship expires. It does. Yeah, relationship aspires. And say you're married, you know, marriage for better, for worse, you stay in there, right? Yeah, you're married, you stay in there, better, for worse. But there's some relationship that aspires. You're in it, you're in it, and then you don't feel it no more. What are you supposed to do? God is speaking to you, say, move on. Move on. And he says, God, oh man, I just love it to death. Yeah, yeah, you love it to death, but you got to love your destiny too. Because God wants to hook me to my destiny and to bring me to the fullness of my... Why do I want to settle for a cup of water when God wants to give me an ocean? Why do I want to stay by the brook when God wants to bring me by the seaside? Why? God has a plan for me and for you. And, and 
I just need to follow him may not make sense to me. A lot of things we do in life don't make sense, right? If it makes sense all the time, we'll be like God. Does it make sense? And, and, especially, and especially God stuff. God stuff don't make sense. Don't make sense. It's not supposed to make sense in the natural mind. That's why we need the spirit. If it makes sense in the natural mind, then we don't need the Holy Spirit. We can just figure it out by ourselves. Now, and, and so we got, let's go back to Joshua. And, and Joshua now was with, in Jericho. And, and all that God told him to do is, look, this is not you. Because, you know why God said it's not them? Because God needs the stuff that's in the land. And if, if he let them fight the war and he take the stuff, then it will be unfair. It will be unfair. So God said, look, I don't need you all because I need the stuff in there. And also to teach them a lesson to re rely on him. Depend on me in all of your journeys and your life. Depend on me. I, I do it for you. And I know the stuff you can do, but they're the big stuff you cannot do. I do it for you. And so, and so the Lord said to them, just go around this wall. Go around this wall. And the seventh day, make some noise. And when you make the noise, I'll bring the wall down. And the Lord did. Because they obeyed him. The Lord did. And the wall came down. And you know the wall, Jericho, if you, if you read that story very well, it didn't fall. He actually came down flat. You know, something falls, like it fell down, like your fence fell down. No. If it fell down, then there'll be obstruction from them going in to the place. God didn't want them to go through all of that. They have to be hopping over, you know, hopping over all kind of cement wall and block. No. It was a highway. The wall of Jericho was a highway. They had chariots riding on them. And so what happened, God just brought it low. That's what happened. About 13 feet, God brought it low and flattened it with the earth. And they can just easily walk on it to the other side. That's what God did. So it, it's got to take, take a supernatural power to make that happen. Open the earth, expand the earth, let this war just go in and flatten it out. And the people went in. They did nothing to go in there. God did it for them. And so Joshua gets into this place. Saw the atrocity and the worship of devils that was going on in there. And the power that God has just demonstrated. And the man made a pronouncement. He spoke a prophetic word. Joshua was operating in a prophetic office right now. Because Moses was gone. Moses was the first prophet. Moses was a great prophet. And now he took over from him. Now he's speaking prophetically. And what he said prophetically, a man's word, prophetically spoken, came to pass. Let's just look at two scriptures and I'll close. I'll close two scriptures. And Joshua, Joshua chapter 6 now, verse 26. And after all said and done, Joshua adjourned them at that time saying saying curse be the man before the lord that raised up and builded this city jericho he was not saying the jericho would not be built he was saying whoever built jericho is cursed not jericho is the person who built it. In other words, he's saying that nobody should ever touch the building of this place. So curse that person will be. And now what did he say? He said, it was very specific. He said, he shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn. And in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So, wow, men of God came into the city and spoke prophetically that this city, anybody that tried to build the walls that just came down by the hand of Jehovah, 
said he shall be building it on the back of his first son. And when he tried to put the gates together, you remember the gates of Jericho were strictly shut before he came down. It was the wall and the gate that stopped them from going in. The gate was strictly shut. Nobody could go in. He said, if anybody try to put the gates back, he said he'll be doing it on the backs and the blood of his youngest son. And now fast forward. Time had gone by. Everybody seemed to forget what Joshua had said. It's the power of a prophetic word. First Kings chapter 16. First King chapter 16, verse 34. And this man, Hell, decided one day, set up a committee, and decided we're going to build this wall and put it back together. And we're going to fix the gate. Seemed to have forgotten or didn't read his history very well. And then find out what had been spoken by Joshua. And he decided, I'm going to do it. Get all the folks together. Let's build it. Let's build it. I'm just saying, the power of a prophetic word. You never mess with the word that comes out of the mouth of a prophet. Because you know what God said? He said, how you know a prophet is that whatever he says or she says will come to pass. He said, that's the gold standard. If it doesn't come to pass, he ain't a prophet. He said, it will come to pass, whether good or bad. I will see to it that it comes to pass. That's God. So when the man spoke those words, yes, before, no one reckoned that it will happen someday. And that generation had passed. A new generation had come. And so this man just elected. Yes, I'm going to do this. Jericho must come back again. And look at what the Bible said. He said he will build Jericho. He laid the foundation, dear Ralph, just as Joshua said. This is, this is one of the most specific word for word outcome of a word spoken by a prophet in the Bible. After years have passed, generation had gone. He says, he laid the foundation thereof in Abraham, his first son, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son, Segub. According, now listen to this, according to what? The word of what? Of the Lord. Which had been spoken, glory to God. What does a prophet do? He speaks for God. He speaks for God. That's why I say it's a prophetic word. When Joshua rose up on that day and made the pronouncement, folk around him didn't understand that he didn't just concoct that out of his mind or because he was upset with Jericho. God was speaking. God was speaking. Look at what the Bible says here. It said, it said, according to the word of the Lord, which he, Joshua, which he spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. God spoke through Joshua, the son of Nun, and just as he spoke it on that day, it came to pass. Just as it spoken, it came to pass. Generation had gone. We had Joshua. We had Judges. We had first Samuel. We had second Samuel. This is generation now. And now we're in the kings. Everybody had forgotten what has been spoken by the Lord. But the Lord had not forgotten what he had spoken. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's the language of God. God does not forgive what he has spoken. And I'll close with this. Let me shock you too. God doesn't forget 
what you have spoken to him. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, he doesn't forget what he has spoken to me. And he doesn't forget what I've spoken to him. That's why he says, that don't just open your mouth and make a vow to the Lord. You got to think about it before you say it. Because after you order it, it's registered in heaven, and heaven is waiting for you to fulfill your vow. That's what he said. Uh, this man was excited. He said, Lord, if you, if you just give me victory, I'm going to war. Give me victory. Whatever come out of my house, the first thing that come out, I sacrifice it to you. And God registered in heaven. He said, that's good. That's my song. That's my kind of baby. That's my kind of Christian. Heaven is rejoicing. I got somebody who speaks just like God. He speaks our language. And just understood what he said. Because that's how God speaks. And then he went. And God gave him victory. The God must see to it that I give him victory. And God did. And then he's coming back home. Rejoicing his victory. As soon as he looked. It was his only daughter. That came out of the house. And cut the long story short. He told the daughter. What he had said to God. Good daughter. Daughter said great. If you have said it to God. I agree with you. I'll do exactly. What you want me to do. And that girl was sacrificed. And now think about it. That, that sounds very gross. But. You know, God didn't say, well, stop. Don't do it. No, 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 don't do it because it's innocent. Don't do it. No, no. God didn't say that. You know why? Because God, when God authors a word, it doesn't take it back. When you utter a word to God, he doesn't expect you to take it back. doesn't matter what circumstance it is. He doesn't forget. And that's what makes him God. And that's why when we relate with God, we need to understand the God that we relate with. I just don't open my mouth and say, okay, Lord, if you just bless me, I'm going to win a hundred souls to you. You are not going to win a hundred souls. So don't say it. Because if you say it, you better be counting. Until you hit a hundred, you better don't stop. You better don't stop. Oh, yeah, you better don't stop. God, if you just give me that job, I'm going to give you my first paycheck. And then they give you a first paycheck. They say, God, you know, I got bills to pay. God doesn't understand that. No, 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 no. God doesn't understand your bill. You had bill before you made the promise. <laughs> no, no, no. Heaven doesn't. You better put in the paycheck. Otherwise, he's going to blow everything away. <laughs> he's going to be so upset he'll blow everything away so before I open my mouth I better understand that God I'm not dealing with man you know I can say to you brother Brian you know I'm going to buy you buy you dinner next, next Sunday and next Sunday comes I say well you know my kid they need me at home sorry I can't do it you've been fasting waiting for my dinner <laughs> You know, you're not going to be upset. You say, well, he couldn't do it. Praise the Lord. I just go get myself some hamburger. Right? But God doesn't think like that. He's not going to get himself some hamburger. No, he's waiting for that sacrifice that you promised. Because he will see to it that you get that job. He will see to it that you get that thing that you ask of him. But he also see to it that you bring him the promise, the fulfilled promise. And so prophetic word is always a word that comes to pass. And you and I can operate in the prophetic. Yes, you can. It takes me coming into the place where God wants me to be. Getting the word that God wants me to get. And the boldness to speak it after processing it in my spirit. And let it come forth through my mouth. And when I speak it, I go to sleep. Because that word that I spoke on behalf of God is going to come to pass. Because he watched his word to fulfill it. Every word, he's watching it to fulfill it. He has his eyes on every word that he has spoken. He's seen to it. That is fulfilled. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. That's the power of God. 
So I dare you and I to begin to walk in the prophetic. That we can speak in the name of the Lord Jesus. And it will come to pass. Bow your heads and pray right now. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I give you my vocal cords. Speak through me in the name of Jesus. Take my tongues. Speak through me, God. Let me begin to speak on the behalf of God. Let me stand in the place of God. Let me yield myself to God. God, let me speak the word that my mind cannot contain, my spirit cannot handle, but it's the word of God that proceeds from my mouth. Let me speak not as man will speak, but as God will speak in the name of Jesus. Come and pray right now. Yield yourself to God. You may need to recommit yourself to God, rededicate yourself to God, because God wants to use you, but you've been running away from him. Don't want him to touch you. Don't want him to speak through you. Don't want him to minister to you. You can yield yourself. Obey the yield sign. Obey the yield sign. Tell God, Lord, I want to follow you. Jesus, I know my destiny is tied to you. I want to follow you, Jesus. I want to follow you. I want to follow you, my God, in the name of Jesus. I know my destiny is tied to this place. Lord, I want to do your will. That's what Jesus said. Of the volumes of book written about me, I have come to do thy will, O God. That's what he said. That's what he said. Let us be doers of the will of the Father. Yield to God to speak through us, to move through us, to use us mightily in the name of Jesus that the words that come out of your mouth and my mouth, they are words seasoned with grace. They are words that have been processed in heaven, delivered into my spirit, in my mouth, yields it and speaks it out on the behalf of God, like Joshua spoke, and it came to pass generations after. God is relying on you and me, but we are to yield to him in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we praise your name. We exhort you now. Hallelujah. Uh, oh God, we just want to thank you for all that you have been to us in the name of Jesus. Uh, we commit ourselves to you now, God. We pray that you would just drop the fireball of heaven into our spirit. That we begin to receive from God what God has in stock for us, God. The Father, we become the mouthpiece of God, speaking on the behalf of God to our lives, to our generations, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you right now. We yield to you, God. We yield to you, God. We yield to you, God. Help us to follow you. Thank you, O oh God. We give your name glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen, and a mighty, mighty big amen. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.